Hello, it's your pal Al here again with another Al's Geek Lab. Today I'm going to be reviewing MS-DOS 6 DOS Shell. And in this, I'm going to review a feature that I didn't know existed a few years ago. So it's a pretty handy feature. Stay tuned. Okay, so this is the MS-DOS 6 version of DOS Shell. Now, first of all, a uh, number of uh, ways to set this up for display. Right now you can see that there's sort of like pictures here uh, that look like graphics, little icons. The version which I'm most familiar with is the, um, the text mode. And as you can see, it looks a bit more basic, but does essentially the same thing. Now, the reason I'm most familiar with that is because I grew up with uh, Hercules, Monochrome, CGA, and um, later on EGA, but most of the time it couldn't handle the high res that was um, in those versions. So you can see there's a text mode at 43 lines, which I think is actually a VGA mode. And then there is a um, another one which is at 50 lines. These are pretty squished up, I don't really like them. Uh, then there's the low res graphics mode, followed by a few other ones as well. So here's the um, here's the look of the the highest resolution one. So I'm just going to put it back down to graphics uh, medium resolution. Say I think that's about where we started. So the display is split up into a few quadrants. It looks like um, like a graphical user interface. It's not quite. It's what we'd call a two a text user interface. Effectively, yes. Whilst it's got these little cutesy icons, um, it's still effectively a text based system. So if you press the tab key, or you can use the mouse if you've got the mouse driver loaded, you can uh, jump between the menus up here. So I'm at the top one now, I can choose which hard drive I want, so the C drive or the Z drive in this case. And then the directory tree from here, so this is my main hard drive and you can see all the folders which are in there. If you press plus on the ones that have the plus symbol, or just double click them, you can view the directories that are underneath the appropriate folders. Okay, so I'll just go down there, Sierra, and we can see there's a folder called Larry1 in there. Okay, so with the, with going into the year, you can go into here and you can select um, file, and you can have a look at any of the properties which are in here. So, for example, um, if it was a text file, you could print it out. If it was um, like a PIF file or something like that, you could associate it with a particular uh, command. Um, and you can move it, copy, delete, all those sorts of things. And if you have a look, there's the attributes, so you can make it a hidden file or a system file, read-only, that sort of stuff. Um, so all the basic DOS operands, you know, the copy, the rename, all of those sorts of things um, are taken care of by this DOS shell. And this was the attempt around the time that Microsoft Windows came out for the DOS users to make it simpler. So I think by the time DOS 6.22 came along, the reason they kind of got rid of DOS shell was primarily just because um, they were introducing and pushing Windows quite hard. Um, I think option uh, version three of Windows was out by the time that do this um, this version of DOS shell was dropped. So it really seemed superfluous, I guess, in the in the face of what most people were getting, and that was Windows and a full um, full desktop experience that did multitasking and so forth. But uh, the, the, it was quite usable. So if we go into file here and we say select all, you can see that I've selected all the files. Um, I should um, head back into directory tree first, maybe make a folder. So I'll make a folder in here, uh, create directory, and we'll call it LSL1 because I want to order my folders properly. Larry one's not really a name that I like. So I can go in here and move across the here, I'll file and select all. So now I can now move all of those files to LSL1 and it's moved them just like that. Now that's pretty handy because um, it's a little bit harder to move directories with subdirectories in them uh, under MS-DOS command line. So these things really speed up operations and if you use Windows Explorer and you can compare it to running commands uh, in DOS, then I guess it is um, pretty, pretty more, pretty straightforward. Um, so that's one thing. Um, so all of the DOS standard commands, the operations that you would make with DOS shell, regardless of whether it's a file or a folder, are under the file menu. There are a few other menus along the top, as you can see. Um, we'll ignore the help one 
and you can see the tree one is just simply for working on the directory trees so if you press minus or plus that that menu is pretty superfluous you can expand all the branches so if you've got multiple directories under there you can do um, I think it's control star so I'll collapse that and if I press control star you can see that all of the folders now appear uh, so so yeah the, the tree menu is pretty superfluous um, there's not an awful lot of use of that one then there's the view and you can look at the file lists and so forth you can look at the program list so it just basically um, puts all of the menus that you saw before in a different sort of layout okay but um, there are a number of other options confirmation which does pretty much what you'd expect um, display file opportunity options um, just sort of the ordering so uh, it'll display hidden files how it'll sort them uh, and so forth uh, it lacks a search functionality but otherwise it's a pretty handy um, and free utility which wasn't in um, any other versions of DOS other than DOS 5 and DOS 6 so so yeah I'll have a, I'll show you what the task swapper is because the task swapper really is uh, the most uh, powerful aspect of DOS shell in my opinion okay so let's have a look at this uh, task swapping mode if I go into my directory tree and have a look at the folders here let's take QBasic for example and then I'll just scroll down till I find the program that I want to run let's do QBEXE so I'll hit return on that and you can see I'm now in QuickBasic fantastic if I press alt and tab I can then swap back into the MS-DOS shell now if you have a look down here at the active task list you can see that QBEXE is running away. So if I press Alt and Tab again, as you'd expect, you can see QBASIC. And then if I wanted to go back into the directory tree, for example, and uh, run another application, say, um, let's say Norton Commander, I can go in here into the file menu and look for NC and hit return on that and now I've got the Norton Commander file manager so I'll press alt tab again and then I'm back in the shell if I press alt tab and just keep pressing alt tab you can swap between the applications so I'll just go back down there right sweet so that's how we can uh, have active task lists and you can pretty much do anything so you could go and run a game um, I'll go into here run the Prince of Persia and uh, let's see if I can remember where it is. Yep, Prince EXE. There's the game. And I can swap right out of it. And now there's three, three task list items, Prince, QB, NC. And obviously that could get a bit tedious having to go into the folders every single time. So you can go into this main section and add a new entity in there. So you could say new program group. We could call that games and then we go into the group and we could add a new entry in there and we have a program item instead of a group and we could call it Prince of Persia C colon backslash games backslash Prince Prince.exe I think it was right there we go so hopefully now if I kill off Prince of Persia I would then be able to run it from there and the same for every other application so that's how you can use the task swapper to effectively uh, run different um, different applications at once so very handy feature of DOS shell which I didn't I I mean I completely missed that one I have no idea but uh, it's very handy for DOS users um, and the great thing is that it's actually swapping out so you can even use this with limited amounts of RAM one thing at the bottom you'll all notice as well, uh, there's Shift F9 which will give you a command prompt. So you can just do whatever you normally do in DOS and then exit right back into the DOS shell. I hope that uh, looks interesting and is of uh, help. Um, so yeah, uh, if you've got any questions, I'd love to hear from you. As always, pop your questions or comments in the, uh, in the box below and please subscribe. Thanks a lot. Cheers.